Hi, Mike Fisher here, Fish Report. We are uh, at the Star. No, those aren't mine. <laughs> I, I collect Emmys, uh, not Lombardi trophies. Um, my first question as I look at myself here is why do I look like Mike Francesca? Is that his name, Mike Francesca? How, whatever, the, the, the old New York guy? Do I look like the old New York guy? It must be the lighting. My hair is actually blacker than you think it is. Uh, I, I just got off the air with G-Bag Nation uh, and we brought up the subject of Oakham's Razor. And of course, uh, Kavanaugh and those guys pretended like they don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but they're very well educated and they know exactly what I'm talking about. And it, it relates for me to Jason Garrett. Now, um, you probably already know this after 30 years of this. I'm a Garrett guy. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an admirer of Jason Garrett, the person. But uh, that doesn't mean that he's immune to... Uh, to criticism from anybody. And and uh, listen, I, I wouldn't be a good friend if I didn't criticize you once in a while and, and tell you the truth once in a while. We have to understand that there's got to be a logical explanation for almost everything. You know that UFO that you saw? You saw, no, it was just a weather balloon. It wasn't a UFO. That wouldn't be logical. That's what I think anyway. So that's where we get Oakham's razor, which simply says the simplest explanation is probably the true one. And and I'm trying to use Oakham's razor to help Jason Garrett get through his explanation of what the Cowboys did in their 12 to 10 loss at New Orleans. There's some hard numbers that are, you know, hard. And that makes the numbers indisputable, but doesn't make the conclusions indisputable. It doesn't render the answer to the questions indisputable. Those are up for dispute. Uh, and, and so that's logical explanation number one for why Jason Garrett uh, this morning on Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan, and I, I bet you here in just a few minutes as we go across the hall and talk to a red ball here about this and much more, including uh, Tyron Smith and the, the distinct possibility that his high ankle sprain isn't going to be too bad, M maybe won't miss more than a week, hopefully won't miss more than two weeks, that's a good thing. Uh, Kayvon Frazier has a pec problem, that may be a serious thing. Uh, Tank Lawrence has a shoulder, the other shoulder from the one that he had surgery on in April, and uh, the Cowboys don't think that that's too big of a deal. Dallas dazzled offensively in weeks one and two, while also throwing on first and second downs, respectively, 69 and 64 percent of the time. Now that number was reduced in week three against Miami, down to 53 percent of the time, passing on first and second down. Uh, maybe you could say, well, it was just the Dolphins. That's why that was. But in any event, the Cowboys were mass-producing 30-point Sundays. A uh, fairly pleasant change under Kellen Moore, uh, the replacement for Scott Linehan, who, for whatever reason, was not uh, very frequently producing 30-point Sundays, something that he did earlier in his career, certainly did not do that here. So you talk to players, and I have now, Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott, uh, Randall Cobb, Mari Cooper, and they all talk, talk about how this offense is about being aggressive and about attacking. And that was in weeks one, two, and three. And then came New Orleans and the 10 points and the run-pass ratio shriveling up uh, even more, down to 50%. Now, conservatism is the word that I use there. I used it last year in a Jason Garrett press conference. They about ran my ass out of here on a rail. Jason did not like uh, the word conservatism. But conservatism... We're not talking about politics here. We're just talking about football philosophy. There's nothing wrong with it as long as it's based on sound reasoning. If your plan is to be conservative and to run on first and second down more than you throw on first and second down or to reduce by 20% what you used to do to the point where it's 50%, that's fine under two conditions. One, it's got to work. Or a lesser condition, it's got to have been sound strategy. Give me the reason why you did it. Hey, this was this was our thoughts. This is this is what we thought we saw. This is what we thought we had. This is what we thought we could win. We were wrong, but this is what we thought going in. So sue me, and we're going to work harder next uh, this week. That, that's all. That's good enough for me. But the boy Sean and RJ asked him on Monday morning if a run first plan was something that Dallas quote put more at the forefront. And Jason's answer is. I don't know that it was put more in the forefront, forefront, which means no, it wasn't more on the forefront, he claims. We obviously wanted to run, we wanted to attack through the air, we wanted to do both, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we were consistent. We, we needed to be more consistent. No, no, 
you needed to be more everything. Uh, you, you needed to be more aggressive and assertive and attacking, according to your own players in week one, two, three. What changed because you're playing the Saints? What changed from playing three poor teams to playing one good team? Why, why would that change your philosophy all of a sudden? So why would Jason say such a thing? Why would he say, no, I wasn't really at the forefront, when it clearly was? Well, there's Oakham's Razor. There's only two likely explanations. One, Red Ball is too stubborn to concede a strategic error. I don't want to think that's it. Or two, Red Ball knows the numbers just fine, better than you do, and he knows the truth just fine, better than you do, but he sees no value in revealing the truth behind the numbers on a radio show that is listened to by every football person in the country. And I get that. That is absolutely Jason Garrett's modus operandi when it comes to the media. He's on this press conference, he's on that podium, he doesn't say funny things, he doesn't say incendiary things, he doesn't swear. He goes off the podium, we go talk in the hallway, and, and he'll give you some lemonade stories, but he's not going to do it so the Giants, Redskins, and Eagles can all hear it. And I, and I get that. To his detriment, by the way, in terms of public opinion. Not to his detriment as a coach, his, his detriment in terms of public opinion, because unfortunately people still think he's a robot, don't think he's funny, don't think he swears, don't think he has good stories, just think he's smart. And he's so much more than that, but he doesn't think that it helps the Cowboys for him to reveal any of that stuff, so he does not. Boys on the fan pushed again. They alluded to the aforementioned percentages. Jason answers, you mean we ran it more on first and second down? And Sean and RJ said, yes sir, you did. And Jason's response is, I, I don't know if I fully agree with that. But you did. There's, there's nothing to agree or disagree with. You did. Run 50%, pass 50% of the time on first and second down in this game, when in game one you pass 70% of the time on first and second down. Uh, Jason talks about, well, we did a good job mixing it up, but, but you didn't. Your, your running back had 35 yards and 1.8 yards per carry. No mixing. <laughs> it mixed up it is, is what it was. You scored 10 points. You haven't done a good job mixing up anything when you score 10 points. Not the Cowboys, not uh, uh, Bad News Bears, not the, your Little League team. If you scored 10 points, you didn't do a good enough job on offense. Critics aren't asking Jason Garrett and Kellen Moore to throw on every down. And this is where we go from Oakham's Razor to straw man. And I'm, I'm disappointed in this. One of Jason's answers to the boys this morning was, well, you know, we're not gonna, we can't throw it on every down. We can't, every first down. We can't run it on every first down. No, 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 that's not, we're not saying every. Nobody's saying every. We're asking, I'm asking, why did it go from 70 to 50? That's all. And, and there's an answer for that. I know there is. Because uh, Garrett is a smart guy. In this, these coachings, this coaching staff spends a ridiculous amount of hours installing arguing over, throwing out, putting in, changing, and finalizing the game plan. So on Friday, they sit down with Dak Prescott, and he goes, yeah, I love that. Don't like that so much. Let's move that over here. Let's get rid of this one. Let's use, here's our script. You know, here's our 15 plays we really like to start the game, depending, and all that stuff. That, that, it's a lot of work. It's, uh, it pays, but a lot of it's thankless. Uh, a lot of it's not recognized, especially when you lose and score 10 points, even when you're three and one. But, but don't say... Uh, well, what do, you, what do you want us to do? Run on every day? No, that's a straw man. So now we got an Oakham's razor and we got a straw man. And we don't need either one of them. So why does Garrett shift into straw man mode here? Well, we're right back to it. Either A, Red Ball is too stubborn to concede a strategic error, or B, Red Ball knows the numbers and he knows the truth and doesn't want to say I'm on a radio show that's going to go across the country. I don't know that I fully agree with that. It is not a good answer. That doesn't help. That really doesn't help Jason Garrett. Uh, and 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 the, listen, who am I? I'm just some schlemiel who, as I get older, is starting to look like Mike Francesa, apparently. Especially with my teeth. I need to get my teeth like whiter than white. Like, and I need probably age. I don't know how old Mike is, but surely I'm not that old. It's just the lighting, I tell you. I I I can make an excuse for conservatism. This is why we did it. It didn't work. I can make an excuse for throwing the ball on every down and then losing, saying, 
we, we had a reason. Here's the reason. It didn't work. Here's our thinking. It didn't work. But I don't know that I fully agree with that is a losing debate point, and it's a damaging one because now Jason has errantly created the illusion that he's less aware of his team's month-long offensive tendencies than Sean and RJ. Now, I love Sean and RJ, but Sean and RJ should not know more about a football team's tendencies than the Dallas Cowboys head coach. And by the way, obviously they don't, but in this instance... Jason allowed the illusion that they do, and that doesn't help anybody, except for Sean and RJ, because they're football guys. It does help them, I guess. For Garrett's sake, I really wish, I'm going to read this. I wish he had simply said, I, as the head coach, oversaw the designing of a game plan that we thought would work. This time we were wrong. We'll be working our asses off this week to get it right. That's all you got to say. That approach, not as a canned answer, but as a real answer, a real approach is the answer, and I'm willing to bet that's exactly what's happening. As soon as Garrett gets done with us in the uh, media room here in a little bit, he'll go back upstairs and they'll go back to work. And his coaching staff will go back upstairs and they'll go back to work. And they'll go down to the dining hall and they'll grab themselves a sandwich and they'll put it on a, in a bowl and they'll take it and they'll go back up to work. Uh, I, that's what I believe is going to happen this week for the Dallas Cowboys. I love Gavin Dawson's suggestion that maybe, maybe Jerry will poke his head back in there. said, hey, what happened to our 30 points a game? Uh, and that's uh, certainly a distinct possibility as well. But but you got to dump the straw man. you got to dump the Oakham's razor. you got to dump the fuzzy math. Let's put those up on the dusty shelf where they belong. Let's get back to work. Fish out. <laughs>